Promise. Brian Johnson of the Fulton County Community Foundation. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Randy. Ah, beautiful walkover. It is. Yeah. It was slightly damp. Slightly damp. Better, really? better than the drive-in yesterday that was, was really slick. I was going to say, at least so, you didn't have to put your ice skates on to come over. I didn't today, yeah, yeah. so that's that's a good thing, I think. Uh, so. I saw a meme uh, or a video yesterday of, I don't even know where it was from, but somewhere it was very icy, and yeah. the guy had to go out and get his mail, so he just put his ice skating uh, skates on. and That's probably not a bad idea. Skated out his driveway to the mailbox. The roads are great. My driveway's still <laughs> not that great, so I was slipping and sliding around in that this morning. So uh, probably should have, yeah. probably should have put the off-road shoes on. That's funny. But anyway, so, so yeah, it is it is warming up out there. It is. It so is. talking about warming up, we've got a few things going on today. We'll be talking about, I think the theme for the show today is going to be apps. Apps. Probably not the kind that you put on your phone, no. applications that you apply for stuff. Oh. So we'll talk about a few of those throughout the you mean, day. You mean it's time to start filling out apps? It might be. Yeah. It might be. So, But a few things we've got going on. Um, exciting times. We have um, the opportunity for some matching funds from Lily mm -hmm. Endowment. Mm -hmm. I appreciate everybody that has donated towards that. Um, if you remember last month, we mentioned that. Um, Lily Endowment has announced their gift. Phase 8, um, GIFT stands for Giving Indiana Funds for Tomorrow. So the idea of building endowments that will impact our community today, tomorrow, 20 years, 50 years down the road. Um, and part of the challenge that Lilly Endowment has given us is to raise community funds. Mm -hmm. So we have the opportunity to receive $750,000 from Lilly Endowment uh -huh. if we raise three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars locally okay so if you do the math real quick there two for one match every dollar that's donated locally will endowment matches that with two um, so our, like I said our goal three hundred seventy five thousand dollars as of right now we've raised a hundred and ninety two thousand dollars of that pretty so good, pretty good start pretty good start that's over half of the way there so I appreciate everybody that's participated in that and you think about that that will turn into about an additional fifty to sixty thousand dollars every year wow. that we can grant out in Fulton County. So um, and we were talking at our board meeting yesterday, and this year we're looking at having almost two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars in just community funds to be able to grant out. That's awesome. That's a pretty awesome number. That is an awesome number. So, um, the other number that I was amazed by looking at was everything that we do grants scholarships all of those things um, in 2023 we we're able to give out over a million dollars in grants and scholarships supporting local students supporting local organizations um, some pretty amazing numbers awesome. and, and when you think about that that's all local mm -hmm. we don't have to compete with anybody else throughout the state that <laughs> is fulton county so and we're looking to do that again this year yeah. hopefully and so, more and more yeah and more yeah so a few things that we've got going on, um, starting to talk about some of the apps, scholarships. There's some seniors. Yes. There's some pretty amazing kids in our community. There is. Um, there's some slight headaches with scholarships this year. No. Um, but we'll talk about that. So um, the deadline for our scholarship applications, February 6th. So that's not very far away. That's not far away. I there's, check, check the calendar, make sure. Yeah, there's still time to fill out an application, yeah. complete it. We have over 50 applications for graduating seniors. Um, February 6th is the deadline. Now a little bit about the headaches. <laughs> um, I'm sure everybody enjoys filling out the FAFSA, that, the yeah. free application uh -huh. for student federal aid. Um, something that is required for a lot of scholarships that consider financial need, which we have quite a few of those. So um, we've had some families that have had issues with that. Yes. Um, it's nothing that they're doing. It's part, a lot of it is on the well, FAFSA, website yeah. that yeah. you use to complete the FAFSA. So um, we've been trying to figure out how do we do this when some of these families haven't been able to get this number we'll, we'll have two families one sitting next to each other talking about it and doing the application and they both do the same thing and one will say your application is complete and the next one will say your application is under review or pending <laughs> and nobody's quite sure why, why yeah. that's happening other than there are still some glitches in the system so 
That being said, if you have gotten that message that says your application is pending or under review or not complete yet, don't panic. Um, we have, like I said, a number of our scholarships that require financial need information and we use information that comes from the FAFSA. Um, so Shannon Berger, our scholarship coordinator, has her work cut out for her, has her work cut out for her <laughs> but has also made a few changes on the application. Ah. So there's a couple of places, there's one place in particular where it asks if you want to apply for financial need based scholarships. Hmm. Um, and one of the requirements in the past has always been to upload the family contribution, student aid information, um, whatever current term they're using for that in order to proceed to get the rest of that application. Right. So there's a lot of times where there's a scholarship or there's a there's an essay or some extra questions that need to be answered for those and you don't get those until you hit that yes and upload that. Well, since some families don't have that, we've created a third option that says, yes, I would like to apply for these. I don't have my information yet, mm -hmm. but I will get that to you when that's possible. So if you're one that is having trouble with that, first of all, don't panic click that button that says, yes, I would like to apply for this, but I don't have this. And if you have any questions, call Shannon. Um, th these applications, to start the application, you can go to nicf.org, click on the Fulton County, there's a scholarship tab, and you'll see the information about how to start an application if you haven't done that. Um, if you get into issues with any of that, with the FAFSA, Everybody knows it's an issue. The school counselors mm -hmm. have been working on this as well. It's, it's caused a little bit of stress, but we don't want people to stress out because it sometimes can be difficult to yes. do that. So give Shannon a call, 574-223-2227, um, or you can email her scholarships at nicf.org. Um, we will ask, and um, I think she's asked if you haven't gotten the information completed because we're still a couple weeks out. This issue may be resolved by that February 6th deadline, but if not, um, we are asking that families be able to provide that information by February 19th. So, don't panic. Give us a call. Um, we will try and help however we can. Right. Um, because really, what we want to do is be able to give out scholarships. Um, donors have created scholarships and it's it's a really amazing thing when you look at over two hundred thousand dollars in scholarships mm -hmm. provided to Fulton County students last year. Um, that's pretty amazing when you think about that. So, Brian, is there is there unfortunate uh, sometimes scholarships that don't get applications? I'm glad you asked that. It's almost like I asked you to ask that, which <laughs> I didn't. So you're an overachiever today. But uh, yeah, we do have a few. Um, you know, it's been interesting looking at um, some of the scholarships. We've got a couple of scholarships that are education related that we don't always get a whole lot of um, applications for. Um, agriculture is another one that's quite surprising. Um, but one thing that, that a lot of times we see, especially with the agriculture scholarships, maybe it's not an ag specific degree, but mm -hmm. it's something that's going to be used in agriculture in the future. So mm -hmm. you think somebody going into business, business management may not think of that traditionally as an ag degree, but you know what, if you're going to plan to help manage a farm with that degree, right. then all of a sudden that becomes ag related. So so those are a couple that I, I'd really encourage if, if you're looking at agriculture, if you're looking at education. Um, sometimes nursing is another. We have some very specific nursing scholarships. Right. If there's any typical New Valley students planning to go into nursing, we've got a great scholarship for that. So um, some of those things, but it, it really ebbs and flows with the different classes. Sometimes right. we have some that are um, art majors or some form of art. Sometimes that's been difficult this year. I think we've got a couple of applicants for that, but um, it really just varies. So if you have questions about whether it qualifies yes. or not, give yes. Shannon, give a, Shannon call a call. She'd be happy because our goal is to be able to help give out these yeah. scholarships that donors have created. So it's um, a pretty great opportunity. Awesome. So don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Right. Questions about do I qualify for this? I'm having trouble with this. I'm not sure how to do this. I'm having fast foot issues. <laughs> um, any of those questions, give Shannon a call. Cool. Um, because we really want to help yeah. give out those scholarships. Well, so. and like you said, they, they, they created those to, to hand out to help for yes. kids. And, 
Yes. And if they don't get used, then yeah. you know, kind of. Not that it won't get used eventually, yes, but yeah. you know, there's that money sitting there. Yeah, use, and there so. and there are some scholarships that are very specific. When yeah. a family creates it, they say, you know, it's really important that we have a very specific student. Right. And we're okay with it not being used every year. But when we find that right student, then we can really support them in a big way. <laughs> right. So it's it's neat to see that as well. But right. just just knowing what the donor wants to do with mm -hmm. that, and, and some donors will say, I really want to just help kids, right. or I want to help kids that do these things, but I really, it's not important that they have these specific activities. And then others will say, it's really important that they have this specific educational goal. There's not a wrong answer to that question, <laughs> but we, we try and get out as much of those scholarships as we can and, and help those kids. So it's really awesome. And, and we've talked about the financial aspect of it, but um, know that when, you, when committees are sitting down and reviewing these applications, it's really encouraging to see the things that kids are doing. Right. And it's also, and it should be encouragement to the students that receive these scholarships. You know, somebody has looked at your application and said, we believe in you, we think you're gonna succeed, and here is, we're, we're gonna provide some funding to help you with that process. So know that it's, yes, it is funding, but it also should be encouragement right. that somebody is saying we believe in you enough we want to encourage you and, and help you along the way so it's a really neat process to be all the way through get those applications filled out get those applications filled out looking forward to seeing that so okay a break from our apps we'll talk about <laughs> apps here in a minute again but um, kind of some exciting things and this does kind of relate to some grant applications because we've helped with some funding but the times theater mm. i hear they're having a big event a here big and party big party They've got a few things going on, but save the date, February 14th, Valentine's mm -hmm. Day. If you don't have Valentine's Day plans yet. There you go. Take your significant other to the theater. Uh -huh. Sounds like there's going to be a big party group called Southern Accents. Yeah. Been here before. I think they Valentine. sold it out yeah. last time. I'm sure they'll sell it uh, out again. So coming up on the 14th, the big celebration, the 100th anniversary of yeah, Praise crazy. Theater been interesting we've been like I said we've been working with the theater for a few years and it's great to see it's hard to believe that it's only been open for just under a year yeah all the things that are going on um, I was looking they they have a new website I'll plug that for them that I accidentally found <laughs> today, but I think it's ready to go now yeah so, if you found it um, it's ready I know that Julie's not listening to me now so she can yell at me later <laughs> as she needs to but um, you can find some tickets on there um, been interesting. I keep hearing the name Haywood Banks. Ah, uh, yes. She did so, tell us that he was um, coming. I think that show's getting close to being sold oh, out. Oh, I bet. So, um, pretty popular name. Mm -hmm. Another one that I saw on the list, they don't have tickets ready for it yet, but Echoes of Pompeii. Oh. Pink Floyd tribute. Ooh. I'm thinking I may end uh, up there. That, that could be a fun one. It, so, I, I always worry these tribute bands, and I love Pink Floyd. David Gilmore uh -huh. is like one of my heroes. <laughs> um, I listen to some of their this Echoes of Pompeii, yeah. and it's pretty good. Yeah. I um, mean, it's pretty hard to duplicate some of that stuff. <laughs> doing good with that, so just a little plug. For yeah, that. you'll be getting your tickets. I'll be you? getting those tickets <laughs> right on sale. So, anyway come join me for that there show. There you go, there you go. And, and it's just amazing how much they, they had a bluegrass festival a couple weeks yeah. ago and really um, one of the coldest days of the year and I heard so many yeah. people say that was great. And downtown was busy. Downtown was busy. So it's great to see the theater bring some life to yeah. our that town and, and highlighting some of the great things that we already have and expanding on it. So, okay, so back to our apps. <laughs> Talking a little bit about grant applications. Of course, the theater is one that has benefited from some grants in the past. We have a number of projects around the community that have done that, but um, we always start off the new year thinking about those planning ideas. I've already had some conversations with organizations saying, hey, we've got an event going on or we have a project, and we're gonna need some funding for that. And now is the time to think about that. Mm -hmm. So uh, a few years ago, we switched from not having a grant application deadline. So. Um, sometimes people will say, well, when do I need to submit an application? And that depends. So if you need to know about funding right now, probably now is a good time <laughs> to do that. Um, but 
it depends on the size of the application. We have anywhere from what we're calling now a microgram application, okay. really about a two page application. And I say page, it's all online now, so it's e even easier to do there. Um, but anywhere from a microgram application that's maybe a few hundred dollars. You've got a small project going on, you've got an event, you just need some extra funding for that. Um, a one page, two page, pretty simple, tell us about the project, tell us what it's going to cost and let us decide. Um, we have our community support grants, which are in that few hundred dollar range to ten, fifteen thousand um, dollars those sometimes it takes the committee a little bit of time to look at that so I, I'd encourage you if you're looking at having an event or a project this summer now is probably the time to go ahead and complete that application um, it's a few pages has some information I know one thing that we often get questions about is financial information how much do I need to know of that um, I always my standard answer is you need to have enough information that our committee feels comfortable that you can do the project with the funds that you're asking for. Right. So if you feel comfortable that say, hey, this is a $10,000 project and we're pretty comfortable, we've got good quotes and things like this, um, then we can get it done for that. Yeah. So that's always um, one of the most asked questions is financial information on that. And then we also have impact grants thinking about impact grants, theater has been a beneficiary of this, youth baseball, um, community centers around the area in Akron, Fulton, um, some different projects. Um, those are larger grants. That's probably getting in that 15, 20,000 plus, and I say plus. Um, we've granted upwards of 70 to $100,000 to specific projects. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we don't necessarily have a cap on that. We do have an amount of money that we can spend each year, but um, come to us with those ideas. And sometimes it's over multiple years. Mm -hmm. Some of those projects that I mentioned, it may have been support over two or three years where they said, okay, this is the next project that's important. And we'd say, okay, we have funding for that. We don't have funding for another project this year, but talk to us next year. So um, those impact grants, it's a little bit different process from the other two in the fact that the first step is a letter of intent. So you just simply complete a letter saying, hey, this is the project that we're doing. This is what we think it's gonna cost. Um, this is our timeline. And then our grant committee sits down and reviews that and looks at that and says, okay, we'd like to see more about that. And then we develop a specific application for that project, um, potential to have some site visits. It's more of a conversation process starting with that letter of intent. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I encourage organizations, you know, sometimes those applications may take three, six, nine months, a year. Um, these ideas are still coming about in bigger projects. Sometimes you always think about construction, think about permits, timelines, things like that. Um, or sometimes bigger projects take more people. Yeah. And sometimes rallying people around and be part of that project. So, so those impact grants, I always say it really starts with a conversation. Um, so, and really any of our grants, if somebody says, hey, we've got this project, does it fit with any of the grants that you guys provide? That's a question you can just ask mm -hmm. us and we can say, yeah, that's something that's great or, you know, not something we really fund or we've never been asked that. We will <laughs> find out. I still get I still give that answer on a regular basis. I've yeah. never been asked that question, but there's one way to find out. Right. So um, we just really want to talk about um, how we can support the community. Um, and it's really neat to see some of the things you look around the community and some of the things that we have to be really proud of are from organizations that are volunteers that just want to see good things happen in the community. I mean, the, the theater is a great example of volunteers coming together saying hey I have an idea and somebody should do something about this and this group that we've got together is somebody and look what happens with yeah. that so of course that's that's growing into a more than just a volunteer organization which is great um, in, in having an impact um, something else that I wanted to mention is schools this year we often get requests from schools we will have a school specific application available for if teachers have a a project, an idea, need some funding for a, 
a class or a program, um, that's something else that we're going to be looking at supporting specifically as well. So um, I talk about a lot of this stuff again, NICF.org. On Fulton County we have a grants page. You can do this grant application entirely online. When you start looking at it, there'll be some basic questions that are asked that will help guide you into this process. Which one should I fill out? Well, you know what, I don't know how much this is going to cost. So which application should I look at filling out? Um, so um, that process can be actually done entirely online. If anybody has questions about that, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, Corinne Becknell Lucas is our associate director and also program coordinator, so she deals with a lot of those grant applications. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, same number, 574 2227. <laughs> almost said four because my number says four. <laughs> so, um, so those those are some of the grant applications, and then a couple others. These aren't ready yet, but um, will be soon. Um, we have specific applications for Kiwana Union Township and Liberty Township, a couple of funds that help support projects specifically in those communities. So um, so those are some of the grant applications and when we talk about these community funds that Lily Endowment is giving us this opportunity, you know, it's, it's neat when we can say, last year we gave out a handful of grants that were over $20,000. First couple of years I was involved with the Community Foundation we had, I think, $40,000 total to grant. <laughs> um, so you think about how these dollars have grown and how they impact the community, and you look around it, and, and you just go drive through town, drive through our communities, mm -hmm. you drive through Akron, you see nice ball diamonds over there. I always mention ball diamonds, because yeah. youth sports is one of my favorite things, but ball diamonds, the yeah. community center, um, some of the parks that they have, you go to Fulton, same thing, parks, community centers, um, library, you drive through Kiwana, um, same thing. I, I kind of sound like a broken record here, <laughs> but a lot of these things that we use on a daily basis yeah. that, um, that we've helped support financially, um, it's, it's great to see how that impacts our community locally. And you think about those dollars given locally that local people have given, that local people are benefiting from, that my family enjoys and benefits from, and your family enjoys and benefits from. It's neat to see how that supports our community. Yeah. So that's my plug. It's awesome. So applications, scholarship applications, we do have a deadline, February 6th. Call Shannon if you have questions about FAFSA or anything on the application. She's um, available to help. We want to give those dollars out. Grant applications, looking at a project, part of an organization, needs some support. Check those applications out. All that's NICF.org. I'll give you my 224 number. 574-224-3223 <laughs> is my number. If you have questions, you have an idea about something for Fulton County, um, you can always find us on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Fun time. Brian, what if there's someone out there that uh, wants to start an endowment? Give you a contact? Give us a call. Give us a call. Um, really, the the question, we've had that a few times this last couple of months, and it's really a conversation about what do you want to do with that. Um, I don't often ask, do you want to start this type of fund? Do you want to start that type of fund? My question is, what do you want to support? Right. Um, because a lot of times people understand scholarships because they've seen that process work. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens if you want to support a specific need in our community? An example, recently we had somebody that approached us and said, I want to start a scholarship. But when we started talking, I started asking some questions and it ended up, you know what, they didn't really want to start a scholarship. They wanted to start a fund that would support specific programs at Rochester High School. Mm. And so it's neat to see that conversation yeah. happen. The scholarships are great. Funds that support local organizations are great. It's really a question of what do you want to do with those funds. Perfect. Um, so yeah, give us a call. Say, hey, I want to do this. Um, we have over 200 funds at the foundation, endowment funds, so there may already be a fund that fits what you want to support that can be given to you. Or if you say, you know what, I'd like to have my family name on something or I want to, I want to specifically honor somebody. Those are opportunities with those endowment funds to support a cause that you're passionate about and also honor the legacy or memory or somebody that's in our community now that's just yeah. doing great things. We have some funds that people have said, this person is doing great things. I want to set up a fund in their honor. <laughs>
probably talk to that person first, make sure <laughs> they're okay with it. But um, those are great opportunities yeah. and, and with endowments that legacy lives on. We, we talk about scholarships. Um, you know, you can't mention the name Jim Barkman without thinking about what school? Yeah, Riddle. Riddle Elementary. You probably attended I was Riddle there. in yeah. your career. And so um, I talk to kids about scholarships now. And I say one of the requirements of the Jim Barkman scholarship is that you went to Riddle School. And the group now did not have Jim as a teacher or a yeah. principal. But there's three or four generations of students that yeah. all had Mr. Barkman as either a principal or a teacher yeah. at Riddle Elementary School. Yeah. So I um, need to see how that legacy lives on and being able to pass that on to future generations um, through these endowment funds. So cool. Give us those numbers again. All right. So 574-224-3223 is my line. If you have questions about grants or scholarships, 574-223-2227. Um, NICF.org, you can find the applications, both grants and scholarships, or stop by our office at 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. Brian, thanks for coming in, taking time out of your schedule. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you next month. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Community Foundation here on the Giant FM Morning Show. That's going to do it for us. Have a great rest of your day.